Uh, and thank you, Manching, for inviting me to uh, to uh, for this talk. Uh, I, you know, um, um, happy to um, to have Manching. Manching was really one of my star journalists when uh, she when she was working for Malaysia Kini. Unfortunately, uh, A Asia took her away from us. But anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for your contribution and. Um, I just would like to say that when Malaysia Kini was set up 20 years ago, that was uh, in 1999. Many of you perhaps are not born yet. Uh, yeah, I can see some of you are actually nodding your head. Um, now, in those days, remember there's no, um, no blogs, no Facebook, no WeChat, no Twitter, no Instagram, no uh, you know uh, um, TikTok or whatever what have you these days. Um, we only had um, mobile phones the size of a brick and uh, email. And I don't think um, there was uh, there was SMS at that time. Uh, I think it came a bit later. Um, so, you know, that was it, really. And we were actually uploading our story using the, a 56K modem. They call it 56K modem. It's a, really a tiny box. Uh, when you connect to the internet, you have to uh, connect to that, uh, to your computer. And it is called a dial-up modem because, you know, the, the, you, have to, uh, you have to first... It's not automatic, unlike today, uh, when you have broadband and wireless and all that. Um, and that tiny box will make uh, really, really funny, funny noises. You know, uh, when you connect to the internet, it sort of, you know, uh, combination of uh, hisses and pings and you know, uh, what what have you. Um, so those were the days. There were three journalists that I hire. Um, and now we have o over sixty journalists. So uh, at that time, when we first started, uh, we 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 were very small. Uh, we were operating from. Uh, from an office in Patalin Jaya, in section section 14, and um, I had you know the, the, I had no idea exactly how long we we're gonna last. It was just basically um, um, the idea that we really need to provide alternative news to Malaysian. Now, if you go back to those days, there were massive reformacy demonstration on the street. I still remember that, uh, well, Mahathir was the prime minister, he still is today, uh, so some things do not change. Um, I still remember that we had haze in those days as well, so some things like Mahathir do not go away. Um, but, you know, the, the, in those days, um, the, the were, you know, the, as I said, the, the, the reformacy demonstration and all that, Anwar was just... Uh, was just sacked, um, uh, so the, um, there was a fallout between Anwar and Mahathir. He was supposed to be prime minister, supposed to take over from Mahathir. Um, and um, and if you read the mainstream papers at that time, um, when you have 50,000 people in Madeka Square, for instance, uh, they will say there about you know four thousand or five thousand. They didn't lie per se, you know. They, they quote the IGP, the police chief, to say that, well, there are 4,000 or 5,000 demonstrators. Um, so they didn't actually lie, but, you know, I think definitely in those days, well, the police chief would have, should have, the, you know, his eyes checked, really, you know, to, to, when it comes to estimating the crowd. Um, so there's massive crowds on the street, and you can see that the mainstream papers were not or the mainstream you know, the, the, the TV station and, and, and radio station, they were not doing the job uh, properly. Uh, they were not really reporting exactly what was happening uh, on the ground. And uh, that's how uh, Pramesh and myself, uh, Pramesh Chandran, uh, we met uh, when we were studying in Australia. Um, so uh, uh, when we came back here, uh, we somehow you know, uh, found ourselves working for the, for the same newspaper, which was The Sun. Um, and eventually, both of us left uh, because of the censorship that we had to face. Uh, so I, I, I was so upset that I actually 
went to, I left the country again. I, I went to Thailand uh, and worked there as an editorial writer for, uh, for a newspaper called The Nation. Um, and that's when, you know, the, the reformacy uh, um, uh, uh, campaign started, um, partly sparked by what happened in Indonesia. Um, there were, you know, the massive, uh, massive demonstration against Suharto. Um, and I think that inspired, you know, a lot of Malaysian as well. Um, so uh, after the fall of Suharto, um, you know, when, when, when Anwar decided uh, uh, to call on the Malaysian to come out onto the street uh, to campaign for democracy, um, a lot of Malaysian uh, did uh, answer that call. Um, so when, that all, when that, all of that happened, I, you know, uh, Prem contacted me. Prem was already working for uh, the Malaysian Trade Union Congress. It was just basically, a, it, was work, it was completely out of journalism. It was working as a research officer for the, uh, for the MTUC. Well, you know, the, 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 they contacted me a bit later uh, by email, the, and we uh, decided that uh, that uh, the, that we need to set up Malaysia Kini or a a a, a newspaper or something like that uh, in order to provide you know the real information to a uh, Malaysian. Now the thing is that the thing was that uh, we didn't actually intend to set up a news website. In those days, internet was still really, really, really new. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, unlike today, uh, it, was, it wasn't that popular. Um, so we were thinking about print, really, you know, uh, maybe a magazine or maybe a weekly or something like that. But of course, we couldn't get a license to do print. Um, so internet was the uh, only option left. Um, and we didn't really know much about the technology. Uh, so uh, we decided that uh, this is... Uh, this is uh, the best way for us to uh, to circumvent, you know, the uh, the censorship problem, uh, the fact that you do not need to apply for a publishing license, we just basically call ourselves content, you know, the provider, and uh, off we, you know, the, the off we off we go, off we went really, um, and um, really, I think, you know, the. Um, we have, we have covered four prime ministers over the past 20 years. Uh, three, actually. I mean, you know, if you include Mahathir. Uh, and um, we have covered five general elections uh, from, two, from 1999, the 1999 election, 20, 2004 election, 2008. 2008 was interesting because of the fact that for the very first time, um, the opposition then uh, suddenly realized that they can actually take power. Uh, but it took them another 10 years before, uh, before you know, we saw the change. So 2013, and then after that, 2018. Um, it was an interesting you know, the, the, uh, part of Malaysian history, I think, and I'm happy that, uh, to, be, to, be, to somehow you know, to happen to see that change happen. Um, I still remember that in my days, 20, in, in, you know, 20 years ago, people are still really, really scared. You may have you know, big reformacy uh, demonstration on the street, but people were you know, covering up their face, they were wearing masks. Uh, you know, every time they uh, talk about politics, they'll be looking over their shoulder just to see whether there's any you know, the quote unquote special branch police, all that. So there's still very much fear on the street. I don't, I don't sense that anymore. I think you know, the good thing is that I can see people are empowered uh, to a certain extent. People are willing to speak out uh, and that is really, really important. Uh, uh, so, um, um, now I just want to say something about, you know, the, um, about journalism. I think a lot of people somehow felt that uh, there are problems with, with journalism. Yes, there's definitely problems with journalism. I think, you know, the, um, um, really, we are uh, 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 facing a situation where technology has actually impacted the way we do our work and the way we actually uh, you know, uh, sustain ourselves. Um, increasingly, you can see you know, the, the advertising model is, is, is being replaced. Uh, a lot of advertising is going to uh, Google and Facebook and all that. Um, um, 
uh, and you know uh, that has actually affected uh, definitely the way media organization actually sustain themselves because in the old days they really you know they rely a lot on advertising um, so not anymore I you know uh, 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 these days even even if you rely on advertising a lot of the money goes to Google and Facebook uh, because of the fact that you know uh, with programmatic buying where you provide you provide you know spaces on your website on your web page uh, where Google can serve ads uh, uh, and then you take a cut from it but Google take a huge cut uh, so instead of companies coming to us directly and say look you know we want to buy uh, a banner ad or something like that they go to Google uh, the reason why they go to Google is that they can do what we cannot do because through their search um, uh, engine and all that they're able to discern or discern exactly who you are what kind of interests that you have what kind of you know what kind of keywords they've been serving so they more or less have a profile of who you are and they can tell the companies I said that look I can promise you that if I serve you that if you advertise me you know advertise with us we can promise that we can give you the people that you want to advertise to uh, we cannot do that. I mean, in Malaysia, we don't have that kind of technology. We may more or less know the kind of, you know, the kind of readers that are coming to Malaysia. We cannot provide that kind of position that Google and Facebook can. You know, Facebook, again, they know a lot about you because of your likes and whatever it is, you know, the, your connection to uh, your, you know, the, the, the people that you are communicating with. So they have a profile of you. So that's the problem with, with, with today in terms of advertising. A lot of advertising has gone to Google and Facebook. We are competing with the big boys. Um, so, uh, so, so really, you know, in the old days, uh, uh, when you talk about medianization, we are really competing with, with uh, say, for instance, with Malaysia Kini, you'll be competing with Star, Straight Times, Greater Harian, Utusan, and all that. But when it comes to advertising these days, you're not just competing with them, you're competing with multi billion companies like Google and Facebook. It's really you know a no win situation so you have you know eventually we decided that we need to go to our readers uh, and that is why you know uh, we in implemented the subscription model um, and I was you know I think I'm happy that uh, to know that uh, quite a lot of people are willing to uh, Malaysians are willing to dip in the pocket and actually pay you know some money uh, to subscribe to Malaysia Kini that's not easy. I know around the world, uh, really, a lot of media companies are finding it really, really hard uh, to get subscribers. Um, um, and even in Malaysia, still, you know, it's not easy. Uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, whoever, whoever else who are trying to get into that subscription market will find it really, really difficult. Uh, so you can see even, you know, the mainstream media will find you know, the Star or Utusan or whatever it is. Uh, will have a tough time if they really want to uh, get their readers to actually pay for content. Um, the main problem with, I think in, in some ways, the media organization killed themselves right from the beginning by offering the content for free. Um, you know, they, they thought that somehow, you know, they didn't expect that somehow it will affect their business model. Uh, by giving the content, you know, for free online, they, uh, they actually, uh, they, uh, somehow you know they make it uh, um, uh, well somehow encourage the mindset that everything can be obtained for free on the internet but at the end of the day I believe that journalism is important it should be supported um, and that it has a big role to play now increasingly that role is not you know uh, has been somehow uh, blunted by social media, uh, but I think it still has a very important role to play. Um, I think a lot of people will complain about the fact that, you know, uh, 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 the New York Times or, you know, or even Malaysia Kini and all that, uh, how come you're report reporting on this, how come you're not reporting on that? That has always been a problem. Um, but I think uh, um, uh, what is important is that um, for us to realize that the media, or media organization has no longer has complete monopoly on the dissemination of information. Um, uh, in the old days, we have great powers in the sense that you know uh, uh, you got no other choice. You have to come to you know you want to get information, you have to go and 
go and buy a newspaper, for instance, or go and watch TV, the news, you know. Not anymore, really. I think, you know, the, that's why I think media organization have lost certain, certain uh, level of monopoly there. The social media has ended, you know, that kind of influence. Um, uh, but I think the social media uh, has definitely got problems as well. Um, and I think it is important that, you know, uh, that we, uh, um, that we uh, um, um, also, you know, uh, somehow play a role in, uh, in, uh, in, in, you know, the, um, um, making sure that, you know, the politics is, 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 is somehow, you know, the, that we can achieve what we want. Now, um, Malaysia is a highly divided society. Um, it is, you know, multiracial, multicultural, multilingual, and multi, uh, multi-ethnic, multi-everything. Um, I think it's unique in many ways. Um, um, it is unique in the sense that you know, there are nowhere in the world that you have, uh, you do, despite you know the diversity that we have. Uh, well, in addition to the diversity that we, that we have, uh, there is no super majority. You know, in other countries where you've got multi-racial or multi-ethnic uh, uh, setup, you still have a super majority, not in Malaysia. Um, so if you look at, you know, the majority, depending on how you, how you uh, calculate, how you count, uh, it will be about 50 odd percent to 60 odd percent. Uh, so you have huge minorities. Um, and in that sense, I think it is, it is, it is highly complex. Um, you know, the, the, and that is why we are here today, really. I think you know, the, it is not an easy uh, situation to be in. Uh, you know, the, so I think, I think it, is, it is important for us to recognize that. It is hard you know, the, to bring about change. You need to build uh, a, a level of consensus. Um, now, if you can, if you, you know, the, I think the reason why in 2018, last year, when, if you, when eventually we managed to bring about a change in government, that's because of the fact that there is somehow a level of consensus on corruption. You know, the, we have such an abhorrence to that. We all, you know, somehow felt that, uh, that we have to do something. Uh, and partly because of the, you know, one MDB issue, uh, that somehow galvanized a lot of Malaysian to feel the same way, and that you know, the, so I think I think you know the, we have managed to achieve that that level of consensus on corruption, but not but not everything else. Um, you know, we have to somehow the, on every issue we have to come to we we'll have to build that that consensus, um, and that's not easy. The problem with the problem is that you know the social media is actually um, making that consensus even harder because of the fact that you know it is it is it is building uh, uh, how to put it it is you know uh, creating uh, echo chambers it is creating more division in the sense that you know that you are only basically talking and communicating with pe people who actually share your own opinions. So you are actually in the news silos, um, and you know the, I think the main the new role of media organization is not just to ensure that the public is better informed, but also to break those silos, uh, to provide a platform for all the different people, for all the different Malaysians to come together, um, in order to you know somehow uh, somehow uh, uh, find that consensus. Now, definitely, it's not easy because I think you know you need to make compromises and all that. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, you got you got you know the, the perhaps very very different extreme of Malaysians out there, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is a country that we live in, and we need to somehow you know the, um, the understand each other better and try to make that compromise and hopefully. You know, if you, even if you cannot agree on something, uh, you can still agree to disagree civilly, uh, and then move on from that. Uh, 
So that's, that's really important because I think, you know, if you do not recognize that, uh, you're going to have two, you know, the different extreme uh, and continue to argue over something that we cannot really come to terms with. Um, um, and I think the Malaysia Kini would hopefully uh, play that role to provide a platform for all different groups to come together and hopefully to build that consensus. Uh, it may take time, it may take a lot, you know, many, many years, but I think we have to start now. Um, so uh, uh, that is important. Um, um, I, you know, I just saw, uh, there's this recent, um, recent uh, uh, documentary called Active Measures. Um, it is a documentary of how the Russian uh, somehow managed to you know, influence the US uh, uh, election in 2016, uh, US presidential election, and how they helped Trump uh, to win that uh, election. Now, basically, you know, their premise is very simple. Um, it is, you know, to, uh, uh, in a society that you do not, in order, you know, in order to kill democracy, you just divide the society. Um, you divide, you know, you, you, you back both extremes, the right and the left. You make them so, you know, uh, uh, you make them argue over, over everything. Um, and, you know, to, uh, that when society is divided, and Malaysia is already divided, so it's much easier for anyone to divide us. Uh, so in the United States, for society, that's, you know, when it comes to a point where they are so divided, um, it is easy for them to plant a lie, and that lie will spread. They don't have to do the work. Social media will actually help them to spread that lie. And that's the problem, you know. And when people are confused, um, because of the fact that there's so much noises, so much disagreement and all that. When people are confused, a nation that is confused, it is easy you know, to, uh, for anyone who shout the loudest to win. And that's the problem. You know, it's no longer about a rational debate. It's about who can shout you know, the loudest. Uh, I think that's, that's, that's the problem with not just the United States and increasingly, you know, perhaps even in Malaysia. And that is why I think, you know, um, um, I, would, I, would, I would say that, look, um, uh, everyone would need to take an active role in keeping ourselves informed about issues um, so that increasingly it's our job, you know, to, uh, to somehow uh, influence our family, our friends, our workmates, you know, the people around us uh, on issues that we feel very strongly about. Um, politics is too important to leave to just politicians. We do that, you see what happened today. I mean, you know, they are the problem, not the solution. I think, you know, it's important that we have to play. I'm not saying that, look, you know, you go into politics full time. A lot of us have our own profession, that's great. You know, uh, but I think you know whatever little that you can do, wh whatever social media that you are involved in, you can play a role uh, in stopping fake news. You can play a role in actually influencing people, because if you don't do that, there are other people are doing it. Those who do not believe in human rights, those who do not believe in you know the diversity, those who do not believe in the fact that Malaysia should be an inclusive society. Those who not do not believe in the fact that, um, that uh, we should you know, uh, leave the world a better place uh, for, the generation, for, you know, for the generation to come. That you know, we should leave the world better than the one we inherited. So I think you know, uh, uh, really, they are the one because the fact that we're not doing it, they are the one who is actually shaping national agenda. They are the one who is actually, you know, uh, uh, creating, uh, uh, taking over the narrative and making it, making it their own. So I think we will have to somehow, you know, uh, somehow play a very, very important role. No matter whatever they do, whatever little they can do, it is now our duty. It's not just journalists, it's not just politician, you know, I know that, you know, previously it's always been, you know, 
yeah, this you know, the, these are important, important issues and all that. But we'll leave it to uh, to the media. We'll leave it to the politician to take it up, but not anymore because I think you know, the, uh, the world has changed. Uh, the media has no longer that much influence. In a sense, it's still very influential, but not that much influence. Social media has taken over, and that's why you would need to somehow, you know, chip in uh, and not leave everything to. Uh, you know, to the media or to the politician. Um, and that's all I want to say for now. Where is the uh, You can ask whatever question that you want to ask. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I try my best to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so since I have the mic, I get the first question. So you said earlier that the, you have all these extremes that are shouting very loud, but don't you think? A lot of the reason why they have this amplification is also because the media keeps reporting on it. So how do you make this balance between reporting that as well as censorship? Okay. Good question. You know, I think if you look at United States, for instance, uh, the reason why Donald Trump won is because the media has ignored, or over the years, have completely ignored, I would say, yeah, the angry whites, you know, the right wing. Uh, um, and because of that, you know, somehow, you know, the, you, 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 they, they've been marginalized. They were not being reported. A lot of people, a lot of Americans did not know that they exist until the election. Somehow, until Trump won, suddenly you get shocked by the fact that, wow, there is, you know, there were so many, you know, rednecks in our country, in the United States. And that's the problem because I think the media increasingly will have to play a role in reporting them as well. You know, anyone who make a racist statement, whatever, whatever, especially if and if someone like Trump, whatever it is, um, I think they has to be reported so that people like you, people like us, would understand, would realize that there are such people around, and that it's our job to counter them. So you shouldn't leave it as that. And it's basically to realize that, that, that there are Malaysians who believe in such, you know, uh, who, are, who believe in such things. And that, you know, they need to be countered. And, and that is why I say, look, you know, it's important that don't leave it to politicians. The politicians are not doing much to counter, to counter these people. And it's up to us to do that. But you will not do it if you do not realize that, 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 that there are such people. And the opinions are... Uh, such opinions, actually, if it's not being reported on, by the media, it is actually being carried by social media. A lot of the you know, religious right or whatever it is, they are actually spreading the messages through social media. And if you do not realize it, uh, uh, by the time they become strong, it will be too late. And I think it's important that, you know, that we do our bit to, uh, to counter it. So really, you know, uh, uh, it is up to all of us. It's not just up to the media. Okay, thank you. Um, questions, please. Okay, can okay, just ask you to just say your name, where you come from, and then your question. Uh, hi, my name is Jesse. I'm I'm coming from Master Prima International uh, College, hi, Jessie. and I'm planning to ask you like you say you did like Malaysia Kini twenty years ago, right? And it's an era where the internet is relatively unknown. And what makes you like thinking is like a good idea to do that when like nobody de doing it and what really pushed you to do it during that time? When like, you know, it's really controversial. It's really uh, unknown, and you decided like this is a good idea in the era when nobody cares about it. So, re what really pushed you during that time? Thank you, Jesse. Good question. Um, it's a long, it's a long story, but uh, let me cut it short. Um, definitely, I think you know. Uh, um, uh, the reason why uh, Prem and myself launched Malaysia Kini is because of the fact that there was, you know, there was a way for us to get around the censorship because there is no need for us to apply for a publishing license. Uh, there's no way for the government that can... That there's no laws that the government can use to shut you down. Because if you're a newspaper or a magazine in those days, um, if you do not have a publishing license, a publishing license issued by the government, um, uh, they can come and shut you down. They can go after your printers. They can go after the vendors, the people who are selling the uh, magazine and newspaper. 
they can shut them down. They can take away your, you know, uh, uh, the newspaper or magazine. Uh, so I think you know uh, uh, that's the problem with the internet uh, because of the fact that uh, thanks to Mahathir to a certain extent because of the fact that uh, he uh, promised not to censor the internet uh, in order to to uh, to entice company from overseas, especially from Seattle, Tokyo, and all that to come and invest in the multimedia super corridor. Uh, he promised that there will be no censorship. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, there's no laws that actually govern uh, Malaysia Kini. Um, so we can actually, you know, just sell our website um, and they cannot call us illegal. But there are a lot of laws out there uh, that they can use against Malaysia Kini, just as they have used against, you know, the mainstream media as well. Laws like Sedition Act, Official Secrets Act, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, Communication and Multimedia Act, all those. Uh, when we were raided uh, in 2003, uh, when they took away all of our computers, 19 of them, um, in an attempt to shut us down, that was under the Sedition Act. Uh, so under the Sedition Act, they can, they can take away whatever evidence, quote unquote evidence, in order to, uh, for the investigation. So basically, they took, uh, took away our computers. And you know, uh, uh, we were lucky in the sense that, you know, the, uh, in the, a lot of people heard about us, about what happened, and we got people actually walking in, donating their computers to us. They say, "Look, you know, uh, while you are, you know, uh, uh, getting new ones, you can use mine uh, for now." Um, I had I have someone actually coming in and say, "Look, my daughter would be very very unhappy because it's her computer, but you know, you can use it uh, for a while." And I say, "Look, take it back to your daughter. You know, <laughs> I do not want to make her unhappy." Uh, but you know, it was it was that kind of uh, that kind of uh, uh, goodwill that 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 people like you uh, who has helped us help Malaysia Kini to continue, you know, survive uh, to continue to survive and to continue reporting despite the despite you know five raids actually by the police, five you know over the past twenty years. It's not just one. So um, so really, um, 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 what really drives us, I think, is 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 is. Um, wanting to to do our job you know the, the friend of myself when we were in the sun we couldn't do our job properly um, i remember that i um, i used to write a weekly column for the sun um, in 1990 1994 95 to about 1997 uh, and at times you know the, the censorship was so bad that i can hardly recognize my own writing you know, because there were paragraphs taken away, things were being changed. So I had to march into the uh, editor's office and I said, look, you know, if you change that much of my writing, then don't put my byline on it because it's no longer mine. Um, so that kind of, you know, battles that we have to fight. Um, so really, uh, you know, we somehow feel that uh, uh, we cannot continue working for the mainstream papers anymore and that uh, we need to get out of it uh, and do something on our own. Um, and I'm happy that, you know, uh, despite the kind of harassment that we receive, uh, uh, that you, we do have, you know, the, the extensive support out there and they help, they really help to keep us going until today. Thanks, Stephen. I definitely recommend if you are starting your career to spend a year in Malaysia Guinea. It's really worthwhile. Huh? Okay, we have time for one more question. Can I please have one more question? Rare, oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, I am Alicia from Masa Prima International College. Hi. Uh, uh, what, uh, how the new media and like social media, this kind of thing affect your work? And what is your opinion toward new media? Social media. Uh, well, I, I, you know, t in, in some ways it makes our work easier because a lot of, a lot of news are actually been spread by social media out there um, so I think I think uh, you know uh, um, we you know that we have actually someone full time to go through the social media just to see if there's anything being reported that we did not we're not aware of uh, of course we need to we need to double check we need to you know fact check and all that before we report them but we, we, we do get alerted by you know things that happen uh, on the ground and that's great 
because in the old days, people would call us up and say, hey, look, something is happening. Can you, you know, go and uh, report on it? Not anymore. You know, a, lot, a lot of that is actually happened on social media. Words are being spread, you know, the, uh, news are being spread through that. Um, on the other hand, you know, there are also a lot of fake news being spread. Uh, and, and it makes our job more difficult in that sense, really. Uh, the, so every time we receive, you know, information like that, we need to check, we need to make phone calls, we need to go back to the source, we need, we need to you know, say something about the, uh, a minister saying something, we need to call out the minister and you know, to check whether it's true or not, you know, all that stuff. Um, so I think it makes it, it, it uh, you know, we waste a lot of time uh, having have to uh, do fact checking. A lot of times we, we, you know, uh, we found out that, uh, that it's not true, you know, uh, and, and, and that's why we waste our time doing that. But at the same time, having said that, uh, it is also important that, uh, that you know, we play a role not to spread fake news. I think you know, we are perhaps the first country in the world that, uh, that passed an anti-fake news law. And perhaps going, you know, we should be the first country to actually repeal it. Now, that doesn't mean that we are not concerned about fake news. Uh, it means that we don't think the government should have the right, the powers to decide what is true and what is false. I think that is important. That's a distinction. It's not to say that we are, we don't think, you know, the fake news uh, is not, it's not important enough. It is important, we have to fight it. It's just that, you know, we don't think a, a anti-fake news legislation, law, uh, would help. Uh, it is up to us to fight it. So in that sense, I think there's a survey that was done recently that uh, in the United States that uh, people who are older than uh, 65 and above are eight times more likely to spread fake news than younger people. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I think, I think really, you know, we really need, uh, it's the uncles and aunties out there that are actually spreading f fake news. Most, most of the time. But anyway, it is important that, that, that there should be, you know, the better media literacy, people who understand, you know, the, uh, the media better, uh, that, you know, somehow the, the Malaysia Kini will, in, 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 in the coming months and, and years, will be helping to, to go out and, and, and help uh, school children and even, you know, the people who are, who are older uh, to understand how to fight fake news. Uh, that, you know, as soon as you receive information on your WhatsApp or whatever it is, on your Twitter, uh, first thing to do is to check the source. You know, where is it coming from? Is there a source? If there's no source, then definitely it's a red flag. If there's a New York Times there or Malaysia Kitty, go to the website, find out whether it's been published. If it's not published, then it is a problem. Because, you know, the news like that has to be published. And then you check the time as well. You know, the, the so-called news is published when? Uh, because old news always get viral in a different context because you don't check the time of when it was published it could be two or three years ago um, and you get you know distorted by the fact that you know it is our context uh, so you need to check all that those are basic basic steps really so if you take those steps to check you can wipe out maybe 70 percent of fake news um, you know so do not spread them really so you just do the basic check do not, do not, you know, forward them or whatever it is, uh, and then you leave, you know, the, the, the really the hard part uh, to the journalists. We'll try to fight the, you know, fact check uh, the other fake news. So together we can beat this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, Stephen. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so you know, everybody plays a role in maintaining in media independence. So please um, check out Malaysia Kini, subscribe, find ways to support independent media in Malaysia. Thanks, Stephen. Thank okay.